Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show and a happy Wednesday to you. Now, here's the thing. We have another installment of what is going to be the most epic culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding. ding. <laughs> Thank you. It's an interpretive performance. That's what I do. Now, we are joined by one of our favorite chefs, okay? I'm going to say one of our favorite chefs today. Usually I don't, <laughs> but Chef Clem is here. But there is another chef that is a favorite. Chef Sibam Tongana is here to answer any of your questions. I mean, that is fantastic. And don't forget the number that you need to send. Any culinary dilemmas, we've got two chefs, because two chefs are better than one. 63 Siba, welcome. welcome. We are honored. Welcome. Chef Clem is nervous. The so man's been drinking water. <laughs> his, his arms are sweaty. <laughs> His weak arms are heavy. Are you going to be okay? I'm good. I'm just it's so good. happy that we're finally in the kitchen Aww. together after so long. It's been a while. Aww. It's been so long. It's been a while. It has yes. been. Yes. And also, can I just say thank yes. you for being here because we actually asked Siba to leave a trip from the Seychelles to come all the way down here oh. just to be with us today. And she was like, yes, I'm leaving the Seychelles. I want to do this ting, ting, ting thing. Yes. And she's here this morning. No, oh, it, was, it was amazing. My heart is still there. Is it? But also with you. Okay, yes. <laughs> oh, that... At the end of the show, we're all leaving again. All of us. The Seychelles, all of us. All of us. I can fit into luggage, so I'm good to go. Let's do that. So here's the thing. I feel like just to start, before we get any questions in Siva, we, yes. we know that um, your, your bread recipe Mm -hmm. is it's world-renowned. It's something yes. that I've even tried. And yes. I was actually successful. That's how nice it is. Thank you. I'm just saying Dombolo is, it's, it's a staple. It's something mm -hmm. so beautiful. It's something that you share. It's, it's mm -hmm. family. But I think the, the steamed bun uh, vibe on top of this beautiful stew, I think that's the best thing about it. Because mm. it just gives and it mm. gives and it gives. So talk to me. How do we get this recipe done and dusted? What are some of your secrets? Because, I mean, we're here to get your secrets. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'll give you most of my, of oh, my most. secrets, but ah. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be generous, though. Thank you. So with, this is a traditional recipe that my mother taught me. So it's one that's passed not through paper, but through learning. Um, I ha really had to spend a lot of time in order to ensure that I know the techniques. And this is the thing with traditional cooking. Yes. No one teaches you. You have to be there and observe in order for you to, to have the knowledge. Um, one of the things that my mother taught me is that you need uh, a good quality flour. So you can either be a bread flour, or if you really want it to be nice and fluffy, yes. it can be a cake, cake flour, which is what we normally um, used to use and it must be a yeast dough. There are some people who try a dombolo with uh, baking powder and I always say hi, 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 mm. no. And then obviously you need um, some sugar. I like mine a little bit sweeter than normal, so it's a little sweeter than normal uh, with, uh, with a touch of salt. And the addition that I've added is ensuring that I've got some oil because it's, it edifies the dough and makes it nice and pliable and it adds on to the fluffiness of it. I use some lukewarm water, but there are times when I want to be extra, then I use milk. I thought you were going to oh, say, excuse I you say you're going to use sparkling water. <laughs> I thought, that's where I thought it was going to go. But, the, no. but the, milk, <laughs> the milk makes sense because it adds protein yes. to the yes. bread, gives yes. a better texture. Yes. And the thing I love about Dombolo is like, Obviously, you get normal bread with that crust, and that's the appeal of the crust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dombolo's got that equal appeal where it's 100% just comfort. Yes. It's soft, and it's got this pillowy effect, and mm -hmm. I feel like your addition of the yeast makes sense because it adds yes. more flavor that way. True. I love it. True. You lead Must the I way. Must I lead the way? Yes, please. All right, so I'm going to do traditionally. Okay. That's why there's no mixes. Get so that dough. Hands are washed. Okay. Hands are thoroughly washed, and then you make a well in the center. First, you add your sugar. This is two tablespoons of sugar. A little, little bit more than normal, a sachet of, of yeast, and I need a pinch of salt. Um, you have a pinch of salt? Yes. Imagine. Yes. yes. Imagine it's getting little, thrown in. You know, yes. Oh, there. There we are. Yes. There's the salt. Yes, well There's the salt. It's a magical salt. <laughs> Can I just say, so many yes. recipes that have been handed down, as they're not written in a proper recipe sense, as you yeah. said. Sometimes it's about half a palm and it's a, a bird's feather quantity of yeah. whatever in weight. It's a lot of feel. Have it's you a lot of feel. A lot of the, the elders will tell you, you must just feel and feel. it'll be right. my mom. <laughs> so I'd ask her, Mama, how much salt have you added or water have you added? She just says, you just feel with your hands or look with your eyes. I'm like, how do you exactly. feel it? How do you do it? And I think so that's what you're doing is so important because you're taking all those 
quantities mm -hmm. and you're actually putting it into standard recipe form and that's going to be like yeah. Yeah. a legacy of number one of what you leave behind but also too it's a good instruction for actually how to recreate those recipes and i think yeah. that's so important especially in the storytelling of south african food yeah and i think that's really important and you've done that in all these recipes since i can remember being a student yeah i remember talking about how, how how much you 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 test first you don't just write it down yes it's testing involved and it's before it goes down to paper it's gone through a process of like yeah. Elimination or, or any like potential hazards, and it comes out perfect. That's why you were talking about the dobolo recipe you made. Yeah, exactly. Because flawless. It's, flawless. It's, but it's also about your own thing. I mean, if you have those additions, I, I love the addition of sugar because you know, sugar and yeast they love each other so much, uh -huh. and they they really make it even fluffier because you want to make sure that dough can actually steam properly on the stew if you're going to do it properly. I actually feel like salt has appeared. Yeah. I feel like behind you. I feel like I've I've got salt that I've magically. How did you do that? You know what, because ah, I just, I have nice. skills. Um, I went to the Illusion Magic Academy. So, oh, yes. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, yeah, wow. it's sorted. It's a great academy. Um, but now we have salt. Which we is have good. salt. Perfect. No, thank you and, so and much. And look at this. Now, this is what I love about this process. This is the feel part where, yeah. you know, all of the, the people who taught you how to cook, they kind of look at you and they say, right, this is how you do it. And you watch. And as a kid, as you grow up and your head gets further and further above the counter, for me, it never went above the counter, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, but then you start looking and watching and starting to feel and understand it. Yeah. And, and I feel like the look and the feel of it, isn't that, isn't that something so beautiful? Because you yourself will impart onto your next generation. It's so true. And on it goes. It's really Absolutely. true. So what I've done here, I've added some uh, turpid water. It needs to be turpid, uh -huh. nice and lukewarm. Must not be too hot, not too cold. Otherwise, it tempers with the yeast having to rise yeah. the bread later on. And then you do an action between the flour and the oil. Okay. So you add a little bit of oil and then you carry on with the kneading. And as you do it, it then, wow. you know, uh, mixes quite well with the dough. And then in between all of that, in between all of that, you add a little bit of flour. So that's you traditional. See, have you seen how light that dough looks? There's something yeah. about it that's just got a pliability that you were talking about with regard to the oil. It's really coming true because now it looks like something you can work with. And so as we complete this, if you have any questions uh, on this recipe or any of the other recipes, what you'll do is just to fast forward, Seba. Yeah. I imagine you'll rest this for a while. Is that correct? So what happens is I knead it until my hands are clean. Mm -hmm. That's the trick. That's how traditionally you know the feel. <laughs> Your hands must be completely clean yes. and you'll feel that it's nice and pliable. If you, if you you do this it must literally stretch because that's gluten structure and then after that we then let it proof for 40 minutes yes. and then it's ready to cook beautiful in the pot over steamer hot boiling water Done and the, dusted. End result. And the end and result. Then the end result. Yeah. So in, in the pot, now this is the trick. If you are going to use a pot like this, I would highly recommend you don't use the normal lid. Rather, you use something that is dome shaped. Because if it's a normal lid, when it does rise up, it does tend to catch on the lid. So if you've got something that's dome shaped, it doesn't. So you've got a perfect top in the end, which then will give you this beautiful. Dumbolo. Don't, don't cut it. it out. Don't, don't, take it don't out. cut it. It take looks it so out. beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely it. stunning. It is so soft. <laughs> it is so pillowy. If you want to get any of these recipe oh, ingredients, if you yeah. want to get the recipe, so Siba spent all night trying to get this together for you. So it's on expressoshow.com. While they slice into the beautiful Dombola, do remember if you have any culinary questions Ooh. for our session with our two <laughs> amazing chefs, all you have to do is send us a little voice note. You're welcome. 063 6-3 on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And we love having the legend that is Sibam Tongana here as well as Chef Clem. Any questions? Come back. Stay there because we'll be back with another edition of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ding, ding, ding! It's my Feel Good Breakfast Show. This morning we have a very special edition of one of our faves and I can tell you, you are so fortunate you woke up so early this morning. I'm proud of you. You've done that because you have two fantastic chefs who will be answering your questions in another culinary hotline bling! Ding, ding, ding! Thank you. I love that. There's something that wakes you up. I want to make that my alarm. Anyway, Chef Clem is here as well as Chef Sibam Tongana. They're going to answer all of your questions. So make sure you send through a voice note on 063-408-863. In fact, there's a voice note that came through. Uh, this is from Lizette. Now, Lizette uh, has something to say about the dombola. Take a listen. I just want to know if whether I can prepare the dough for dombolo a night before for tomorrow saving. All right. Good question. Siba. Yes. You can prepare the whole process and have the final product 
Um, however, before you serve it, it is best it is best if it is served warm. So I'd say put it back in the pot and warm it up again so that you have it nice and, and fluffy and fresh the following day. Mm, perfect. Thank you, Lizette, for that. Make sure you keep it coming on the WhatsApp line. A voice that will be good. Now, let us get into this. Asiba, yes. you have so many favourites, so many staples. I love your books. I love the fact that you can throw things together, but also this golden soup. Yes. It is, hold on, it's pescatarian, vegetarian, a vegan, health conscious, heart conscious. Yes. There's a, there's a lot. It's like, it's golden. It is golden. So actually, it's a vegan soup. Yes. Um, and it can be eaten by anyone. Um, I've made the soup for the president. That's why I call it golden. Wow. The, for the, the president? Yes. Oh. Our current president. Oh, my, that is brilliant. Yes. You know, there were times during COVID where he would chat to us and look very tired. Then there was a time where you looked very upbeat. It was the was, soup. Is it the soup? It I the knew soup. it. <laughs> Do you remember when he started? He changed shirts. <laughs> it was Siba. The soup. Yeah. It's the but soup. I see on Twitter that. <laughs> what is it about your recipes and Twitter and politicians? Oh, did you see that? Yes. Another politician. Please. Tell the okay. country about what I'm talking about. Your political <laughs> recipes. That's <laughs> well, we've got a former minister. Can I even talk about yes, it? Yes, please. No, I don't want to say Do it. Uh, you know, he can be a bit spicy on Twitter, so I don't want any backlash. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's been cooking yes. uh, the most amazing food. We just say amazing. <laughs> amazing, with lots of garlic. Those who know will know. Uh, with lots of garlic, lots of onions, and a little bit of maybe canned fish and a little bit of lamb. That is one of his favorites. So people have been saying, Siva, please rescue him. <laughs> and just teach him how to cook. So okay. he, he started following me, and that's a good sign. That is a good that's sign. That's a very good. good sign. Well done. So we're hoping, you know, he's going to follow along well, with this I'm just hoping I showed whoever this person <laughs> is more razzmatazz in the kitchen. Yes. That's all. All right, yes. so let's golden soup it, shall we? Awesome. So it's two main ingredients, and that is my butternut and some carrots. I have sautéed my onions, and as, as I always say when, when it comes to soups, people often take all the ingredients and place it in yes. without building the flavour, and it's very important to build the flavour. So you've got your onion, I've got some garlic, some ginger, and some thyme. And those who know me know that thyme is my favourite herb because I'm always on thyme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheesy, but you no, know, I love that's cheese. my kind of joke. You need some <laughs> seasoning, some salt and pepper, and then we're just going to saute everything together. Now, what you want with the onions is for them to be soft and translucent, yes. and once they are, you then add your vegetables. Your two vegetables. Are your kids into their veggies? They are. Well, I trained them well, while they were on. very young. So they really are. They munch on broccoli. They love seaweed. Oh, nice. They, yeah, That's they're very amazing. adventurous when it comes to that. The, the boys take, you know, the boys are a little bit, I have to encourage them more. Yeah. But the girls, like, I love my food. Do you think there's a junior Siva in the mix? There is one of them's going to end up on TV, there's cooking. Two. Oh, you got I've two. got four. So yes. I'm covered. One girl, one boy. One of them or two of them are, are, are destined to be in the you kitchen. You have a channel, actually. Yeah, I, Different variety varieties, shows. Yes. <laughs> I've got a, a, a huge choice <laughs> to influence. So we saute this until the veggies are nice and golden. Mm -hmm. And once they are, we add my two uh, main stocks or liquids. One, this is a vegetable stock. You can also use a chicken stock. If you are using the powdered chicken stock, it is veg a vegetarian or vegan. Nice. So you can, it's, it's absolutely fine for you to use that if you're not going to make your own stock from scratch. And I don't always make my own stock from yes. scratch, and it's okay. And then I also add, because it's a winter warmer, I also add some, some orange juice to it. I, I actually mm -hmm. like to use, yeah, for some vitamin C. I actually like to use a slightly sweeter um, uh, lemon, like a, like a mandarin. Okay. Wow, okay. So nachi. So let this cook together until it is nice. Mm. And, you know, it's come together, the vegetables are cooked. In, in the beginning, I used to blend everything because that's where my kids were. But now we've transcended, and I want them to really have, you know, to en enjoy vegetables without everything having been blended. So we and the textures look go. amazing. Yes. I'm seeing the soup. I like that it's chunky, but I'm also seeing a bit of a... Is that yes. chickpea? It is. Those are chickpeas. And while we do the chickpeas, there's a voice that actually came through. So let's multitask and take a listen while the chickpeas are being prepared. Morning, guys. I just want to know. They used to call that steam bread. 
Is it the same that Steam Bread? Oh, there we go. So there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the Dombola, specifically this yes. one. Mm -hmm. um, in Joburg and in the north, everybody knows it as Dombola. In the Eastern Cape, we either know it as steamed bread or Isonga Samanzi, which is directly translated as steamed bread. Or, yep. uh, and, then the, the, the diff, the, the, and then other parts of the country, they know it as Ujeg, like in Zululand, mm. they know it yep. as Ujeg. But there's a big controversy of, is this steamed bread or is it Dombolo? Because many people know the Dombolo as the mini dumpling that goes into the meat. It depends on which part of the country you come from and what you called it in. They're equally right, um, so you can call it that. So in the Eastern Cape, we call it Soka Samanzi, which is steamed bread or Dombolo. In Joburg, Dombolo is obviously known as this bread. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, in the Zululand, they know it as Ujeg. But in other parts, they'll argue with you that, no, man, that is steamed bread, not, not Dombolo. So there's always that yeah. controversy. But this is the popular name that the, the, majority of people it know. Is it, the, it is the, 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 the politics sometimes. But you know what? I think that no matter what you call it, it's delicious. And we have the recipe for you. Go to expressashow.com. It's your favorite website. And as we finish it off, we're going to roast some of that beautiful, those chickpeas. That'll finish us off, and then I'm going to add some microgreens because just that I love that look of it, and that is what we have right That's there. That's beautiful. Which is the golden soup. This is fit for oh, anybody, yeah. including politicians. We'll be right back with another <laughs> edition of Calorie Hotline Bling. Ding, ding, ding! Super. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso on S3, and this is part three of our culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding! Yes. Now, if you have any <laughs> questions, as always, to our fantastic chefs, Chef Clem and Chef Seba, please feel free. You know the number. If you don't, 063-408-8863. We'd love to hear your voice notes and any questions you may have. First one actually comes on social media. We have Davian Goliath, who actually said to Seba, now, I know, this is like somebody asking, Hey, what's your favorite song? What's mm -hmm. your favorite music? I know it's tough, but what is the best dish you ever made? Davian has asked you that from Facebook. I know it's tough, but wow. try. Wow. I know. Devin, it's almost asking me which of your four kids is your favorite. <laughs> oh. That's a very <laughs> tricky question because each time I create the dish, yes. it's my favorite. And then I create another one and it's my favorite. So I'd say I could easily live on a pescatarian dish. All right. Um, Mediterranean inspired. I love those, um, that kind of food. Yes. But favorite dish, very hard to really pin one. Indeed. Maybe they, they should have asked, what would you make for Cyril Ramaphosa if he was sitting here he at the table? He loves salmon. And the more raw <laughs> there we it go. is, the better. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Look at that. We know something. That was an inside yeah. scoop now. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't tell anybody. <clears throat> anyway, right. So we've got a couple of questions that came through on social media for you, Chef Claire. Okay. So you get to collab, Chef Siba, with this one. Uh, there's a question that came through. Filwe has asked this. She can't make brownies. The brownies are a problem. Says, morning fam, struggling to make brownies. Chef Clem, give us a recipe. I've got a bit of a confidence booster. What's yeah. that? What, what is that? The thing is, when you bake and it's a flop, it doesn't only flop in the physical sense, it also flops emotionally. Yeah, it def <laughs> it's, and that's, it's more of that that lingers with you. Exactly. Yes. So, I've got a confidence booster for you. We're going to make a brownie in a mug that takes less than a minute to Yay. actually cook. So you want? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing is, once you execute this perfectly and you master it, you can do it with your eyes because you'll feel the confidence to take on the next step, which is the full-on baked brownie in the oven. Yeah. And it is, a brownie is not easy. The thing is, you need that perfect, like, Crusty almost, layer. like, crispy top, almost yeah. glass-like little, yes. you know? Yeah. And you must have Gooey. a fudgy. Ooh, yeah. gooey. It's going to be fudgy. Yeah. Yeah. Fudgy, not cakey, please. If people say, oh, I like a cakey brownie, go have a chocolate no, cake. Go have it's not the rice. same thing. I agree. Okay, so here we go. This one is super simple, but, okay, Sibin and I are going to do this. Okay, please Carl, do. we have another question that someone asked about ice cream. Yes, and in I want fact, to give you yeah, another we do. Another question. Do you want to read out that question? That's how any Mambo says. So any Mambo says, hey, how to make ice cream. It's actually quite simple. There wasn't like any hello. Yeah. There wasn't a goodbye. It was just, just, see, just how to make, make ice, ice cream. cream. He came in, he had a job, did the job, Short he's gone. Sweet. Okay, so <laughs> I thought let's do this at the same time because I love the combination of like, Something hot and then something and cold. really cold. Yes. And especially winter, for me, screams ice cream. I know it's a summer thing, yeah. but for me, I feel like I just love ice cream in winter. So we're going to do this together. We've got the hot brownie. It's going to get topped with a very delicious decadent ice cream. Carl Wasty, this is you. This is, is me? Your, this is your secret ingredient. Okay? Is Evaporated that what I think milk. It is? Evaporated milk. Oh, my. We, we had like a retro series a few weeks ago. Yes. And one of the most retro ingredients for me is evaporated milk. Evaporated milk. But it's so comforting. It is like, it is just 
the like most caramel delicious. Caramel milk. It is. Yeah. Ah, so we're using that to make our ice cream. I need you to give that a good beating, a little whipping in your bowl good while that's beating. happening. So, um, talk to me. So you just want the evaporated milk to go in first. Here's though. the mm -hmm. thing okay. about evaporated milk, okay? Look at that. And moms Beautiful. and aunts and grannies Caramel will milk. tell you, if you're going to use it for this type of process, we have to whip it and incorporate air, it has to be chilled. And I'm not talking about chilled like two hours. No. Yeah. They will swear it has to be overnight. <laughs> yeah. It must be cold. That's right. And it's true, else it won't work. Yeah. So, Carl, nice. you're going to start whipping that with your right. mixer over Looking here. real good. It's very similar to coconut milk. So if you're going to do the same thing with coconut milk, yeah, you have to uh, chill it. Okay, I'm going to start slow. Start slow. Yes, please. I don't want to see buzz here. You look amazing. I don't want you to have a vaporator <laughs> milk all over. That's not. I'm not going to do that. Okay, it's simple. So while you're doing that, yes. Carl, in the mug. Flour's gone in, sugar's gone in, a little bit of butter. Yes. I feel like this needs to be a competition. Three, two, one. Go! go. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Carl's just turned up the speed on his machine over there. I'm gonna add a bit of coffee, coffee to the yes, brownie. Because nice. you know, chocolate and yes, coffee. I'm ready. Best now. friends. You're ready. And look at that texture change. Okay, That's what, what is going for. on here? Because that already looks like, you know when ice cream is sort of, uh, yep. sort of really cooled. <laughs> Little melted. Right? It's yes. melted proper, like that's... It's almost um, at the ice cream milkshake yeah, texture. It's a little bit warm, I should say. That's... Okay, so Carl, you yes. can start adding your icing sugar to so it. I'll help you with this. Thank you. So I've worked out that you can do this recipe in three ingredients. Evaporated yeah. milk, icing sugar, and vanilla. Yeah. And, and guess what? It. Guess that's what we're going to do? What do we do? We have 30 seconds. Okay, let's Carl, go. Carl, Carl, you do the things. My brownie is in the mug. It goes into the freezer. You guys stay here. Stay here. Stay here. <laughs> stay there. We're doing this fast. My ice cream's already good. Look at this. Look okay. At that. Once your Who brownie comes out the freezer, we incorporate everything there. But that's good. This goes to the freezer. Start Done. setting up. Thank Give it a good whisk, whisk yes. every few hours. Carl, push your mug. Push your mug. Push your mug. Yes. Get ready with the with the sauce. Get ready with the sauce. sauce yes. Sauce, okay. Sauce. See about give us thirty seconds. Okay. Brownie's done. Done. Yes. Look at that scoop. Look I at that scoop. Beautiful. Look at that. And then call. Hit it. 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 We wanted brownies, oh. we wanted Siba, you wanted Carl. We gave it all to you this morning. We did oh. indeed. Thank you yes. so much. If you want any of the ingredients and recipes, uh, you can go to expressoshow.com and for you, Siba, we are honestly in awe of you. Thank you. We want you to stick around for the entire show. Actually. I will. So just, can I you do that? All the way, I know, so I know. <laughs> Although we want to be in the Seychelles. So if you have any questions, please send it through uh, to Siba on 063-408-8863. And that is a wrap-up of your culinary hotline bling. Ding, ding, ding! I'm taking this.